So, we uh, will make an uh, introduction to G-code and uh, this is absolutely for beginners. Uh, what you can expect of this uh, small uh, training here is that you can analyze your files, you can see where things are going, uh, what direction, if it's a rapid move, if it's a controlled move, and uh, circles. All this kind of stuff you will can analyze after that. You can also make small uh, programs by yourself and activate them on your CNC. It is uh, absolutely necessary to know G-codes today as it was in the beginning of the 80s. No, but I think it's fun and it's also sometimes uh, great to, to uh, analyze the file that uh, a program has made for you. So uh, let's get into it and uh, we will uh, learn about uh, 11 G codes. There are many more G codes. There are also G differences in G codes. Uh, it, it can be like as an example a Gerbil uh, uh, operating system or another type of operating system. So G code is varying but with these 11 G codes here you you absolutely cover all the basics. We will also look on M codes and letter codes. So uh, G00 is rapid move. And this means you need to move from A to B very fast. It is with the tool up and not into the material. The opposite to that is G01, where you, as an example, are cutting in a straight line. And uh, yeah, you combine this with the feed rate. In my case, it is millimeters per minute. Then we have the G02, which is a clockwise curve. And uh, for that, again, we need a radius, we need a position for the X and the Y. We will look a little bit closer into this uh, later on before we go to the programming itself. The G03 is a counterclockwise curve. G21 means that we run in metric mode. And the opposite is G20, which is in imperial mode. G90, absolute programming. G91, incremental programming. And we will also look specific into this before we go to the programming. Uh, G94 is a feed rate in millimeters or inches per minute. It's depending on if you have chosen the G20 or G21. We will uh, mention very little about G53, which is machine coordinate, and uh, G54, which is a coordinate system. It's an offset. It can be many more, but we will uh, reduce it to these two only. So that was the G codes. Um, now we will look into the M codes that uh, we will use in this training. And M codes, they are controlling uh, the machine functions. Uh, turns on the spindle, turns on cooling water, uh, pause the machine and so on, uh, stops it, and the cyclists, all this kind of stuff. So. Um, so let's take a look on these M codes and the first we want to look on is the pause, uh, the M0 that pause the machine and you will have uh, in most of these uh, control systems that is when you press then you press the, the play button again it will resume from where it, it, it stops. I use the M0 in my programs when I, uh, as an example, want to pause for uh, for a tool change. M2 end the program and it really ends the program. It stops, everything is zero out. You cannot just press the start button and it will resume. Have you entered an M2 command? Well, you need to start all over again. 
M3 is uh, starts the spindle clockwise and in this case you can combine the M3 with a letter code, we will look on them later, uh, with an S which means a speed spindle 12,000 turns per minute. Um, M4, well it's also start the spindle but counterclockwise and well I never used it. Um, you need also to have the tools, the mills, that uh, can be working counterclockwise, as an example. M5, just stop the spindle, nothing more to say there. Uh, start wa water cooling, M8 is start water cooling or activate an SAR relay, as an example. There are many ways to through an SSR relay to handle this. Uh, I don't use water cooling or mist cooling so I use this uh, M8 to uh, activate a solid state relay which again will activate my vacuumizer. So I use the M8 and the M9 that will deactivate my SSR relay for start and stop my vacuumizer so I can remove the dust. And M30 it's a program stop it is absolutely at the end of your G code and when it comes to this it could here also have been an M2 but an M2 you need to reload your program and start it in M30 it will stop the the the, the program and move back to the first line so and this brings us to the letter codes that we will use um, we have F for feed rate and R for radius, which are combined with uh, with uh, the G02 and, and G03. Then we have the S for spindle speed, which is turns per minute. X is moving the axis X in, a, in positive or negative direction. The same is for the Y and the set and n is you can use if you like to use line numbers you can have n uh, that uh, will be your line number in the beginning of the file and then we have i radius when create a circle and uh, yeah it seems maybe confusing we just talked about r is radius but that's only if you have a part of a circle either clockwise or anti-clockwise so, um, before we go programming, I want to look to uh, uh, rapid moves. And uh, rapid move is uh, moving from one position to another position as fast as possible will you tool up in the safety height. And it will at least all the system I have had, it will read the the default settings in the firmware for what the fastest speed is. In my case, I also do it in G20 on millimeter mode, and the G90 in this case is absolute positioning, just as we uh, will look on it into this later on. So the Controlled move has a code G01. And this means that we move in a controlled manner in X, Y or Z direction. And that needs some more information so you can use this G01. And one is the G94, which will tell the machine that we run in millimeters per minute. And then, of course, we need to start the spindle and tells how many turns per minute the spindle needs to have, which is an M3 and the S12000 for 12,000 turns per minute. So just a, a little visual thing here to show you what the difference is visually. And it will look like something like uh, this. You see the rapid move is already there, the controlled move is cutting, it is uh, doing an operation and uh, 
it's finished of course later because we only move uh, 500 millimeters per minute in the controlled move in the rapid move in my system i'm on 6000 millimeters per minute so it's a, a significant uh, difference so and uh, now it's time to talk about uh, absolute distant modes and as you remember we had the g90 and the g91 and we will start with the G90 absolute distance mode. And you see here, we have the center of a region, which is here. If we look on all this item here. And we want to move from here to there, which is 80 millimeters. And from here to there, which is 100 millimeters. So the quick thing I will say, ah, that's easy. It's uh, G01, X80, and then I add uh, G01, X20. Well, it could be if we were running in G91, but it's not here. Because everything the system is thinking on is that I have my 0, 0.0, my X and Y positioning here as 0, 0.0. And I have to move in absolute position. It will be there all the time. No difference. It will always stay there. So everything you need to do on, on your item, it has to be calculated from this position. So when I now write uh, G0, which is rapid speed, and X80, it will move to this positioning. And if I want to go additionally up to this 100, I need to say G0, X100. And again, we calculate from this position. So if I want to go back to my uh, G0, X0, it will move exactly back to this origin here. This is very different from, uh, for the G91 because when you start here exactly at the same position, let's now enter the same code, in, but we change it to G91, incremental distance mode. So what will happen if you just change this line and not the other lines? Well, I can show you very easily. First of all, G0x80 will go over here, but because we entered G91, the new center of a region is now here at the 80 millimeters mark. And now the machine zero out here, and it thinks that this position now is X0, Y0. So if we just enter the next line as we did with the G90, so we can come here with X100. Boom, this will happen. We will drive far too long because the machine believes this is a 100 millimeter mark. So matter of fact, what we should have done is that we should have said G0 X20. That would be the correct uh, line here. And also here, if we want to go back to X, G0, X0, well, the machine will uh, just move back here and because it thinks this is the zero position. So we will uh, now program our item and uh, for that we will use uh, NC Viewer, which is a free tool to use, online tool. And you will find the link down in the description. So let's program this item here. As you can see, we have uh, all the measurements, everything we need to do. And for that, we will enter the code into the NC viewer made by Xander Luciano. He also has been so nice to make it as a freeware. So you just can use it without paying anything. Donations accepted. And you find the link below in the description. So before we begin, we will see on this item, and we will uh, uh, program this in in uh, incremental mode. This means our center of a region 
will move along that it will be at the last position the machine had. It will always be the 0, 0.0. Then I have made a small coordinate system that will help us determine where we are going in a positive direction or negative direction. So we are going in incremental mode and we want to be placed here. That's where we also will probe the machine. So it is exactly in this corner and also set will be exactly at the surface of our material. And before we start using the G codes, you will learn to use this semicolon. If you enter a semicolon, the machine will not read the line, but you can enter some text here. And we can call this G code training. Um, we can have something about material six millimeter, yeah, and we can have as an example uh, uh, end mill, our tool and mill, which we also will have as a six millimeter, so we don't have to cut so many times. So they can be dates, it can be whatever you want to enter here. You just need a semicolon because the machine will then see, aha, uh -huh, semicolon, I jump to the next line, semicolon, next line, and next line, which are bringing us to the fourth line. We are still telling the machine how it needs to operate. So I will make a, a start line here, which will be G21. The G21 is millimeter mode. If you were to work in inch mode, it is G20. Then I tell the machine at the same line to go uh, to use G91, which tells the machine that it is incremental programming. And we will have a G94 that tells the machine that it has to run in millimeters per minute in the feed rate. And it is millimeters per minute because of the G21, so the machine knows exactly that. And I want just to show you, want to use a semicolon again, and I want to print here, start code. Now the machine starts reading from line number one, semicolon, jump to the next, jump to the next. Okay, I will work in G21, G91, G94. Ah, semicolon, I go to the next line. That's how uh, the machine are thinking when they see these codes here. Then I also want to be sure now that we have our tool at the right position. And right now, if I make a plot, nothing is shown up because we haven't done anything yet. But I want to be sure that my uh, end mill width has another uh, set save hi uh, I think I wrong that I wrote spelled that wrong safety I don't know tell me in the description guys is um, it will be 20 millimeter yeah? and what is a safety height well it's a height where we are sure not going moving into clamps or or some other material what do I know it's just a high where we can operate in rapid mode and that's exactly what we want to do now we will say G, zero, zero, and we go in set positive direction because we go up. Set positive is plus 20, and you can always check it here. Boom, you see the comma dot there, and we are 20 millimeters above. Remember, this is now our center of a region in on our uh, set axis yeah and now we can go g zero zero x zero y zero and this is exactly at this point here and why do i not just enter that into one and the same line because i want to be on my safe set before i start move my x and y axis so i know 
create any damages on the tool or the item itself. So that's why we do it like this. Um, let me just take it down here. Right here. So it should be good. So now we are placed exactly here. And we just move in rapid move. So uh, before we can start drill down, we will have to uh, we will have to tell the machine how fast it needs to run, um, and uh, the sp turn on the spindle, all this kind of stuff. This information needs to be entered into the code. Um, but the first we want to do now, because we are sure we are on the right position, so I just go G zero zero in rapid mood, <laughs> rapid move. Uh, set minus 19. This should position us exactly above the item. Uh, we can see that here now. And you see now we are exactly here. That's where we are now. You see it moves here. If you click on that point there, you will see we stand on line, line uh, uh, set uh, minus 19. And our new center of origin is now one millimeter above our item. We will now have to start the spindle. And this we do with an M3, or you can call it zero three, it doesn't matter. And we use the S command for um, uh, uh, spindle speed, and that's turns per minute. In this case, I want to use 14,000 just to enter something. And now the spindle starts, move up to, to a, a spindle speed of uh, S14,000. Then we need to drill down and we need to, it's a six millimeter material, it's a six millimeter tool. So I want to cut with, uh, with uh, three millimeters in the, in the depth. And this I do now with a G01 because now we have a controlled move and I say set minus four because I was one millimeter above the item. So this means that I need to get down set minus four millimeters. Um, and now I need to tell the machine because we haven't tell any but thing about feed rate. So this I want to do now with an F250 and I only use 250, which is a half of my normal speed. I would do here uh, because I want to, to, I drill down to these uh, three millimeters. So now we are at the depth of, see here we are three millimeters down to the material which is good and the spindle is running the next is a move from here to there which is 40 millimeters so it is a G01 we go in a positive direction on the Y which is here and we don't move at all on the X so no need for waste memory on typing something on the Y. So G01, X40, and nothing more. That's exactly what you need to type here. Uh, not X, sorry, it's Y. It's Y, 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 Y. You need to yell at me. It's Y40. And if I not enter any feed rate here by the letter command F, it will continue in 250 weeds. I think it's very slow for this big tool. So I want to enter it to F800. So now we move from here to there. And remember now our new center of a region will be here. So this is our X0, Y0. We now need to go to this point and we need to move from here in a positive direction on the x-axis which you can see here we go there 
and we go also in a positive direction on the y-axis which you can see here on this uh, uh, coordinate system we move in positive direction we know the radius is 10 we know we have x0 y0 here so we will then move 10 millimeters positive here on the x and 10 millimeters positive in the y so that's what we start to do now and we also know it is a clockwise curve and this tells us it is at g02 command x 10 y 10 and then we have a radius because if i just if you just do like that that's just a plot up here it just tells to move over here and it doesn't really know what to do because we have to enter the radius which is radius 10 and now we get this beautiful curve now we are here and guys what to remember absolutely correct this is our new center or for region x0 y0 and we know we need to go 30 millimeters to the next stop and um, that is very easy because we have a straight line which is in the positive direction on the x we don't do anything on the y so we just continue with x 30 so g 0 1 for controlled move x 30 and nothing more i could if i want to change my feet rate which not make sense uh, i could do it now but i know the last feet rate i was entering was f800 so it will continue doing that so let's see where we are going by pushing the plot command and you'll see we get over here but now we get some challenges now we have a anti-clockwise curve which tells me it's at least it's a g02 curve uh, sorry g03 curve and it also tells me that i need to go 10 out on the x-axis which is from here to there in a positive direction but also from there and down to here exactly which now is a y negative direction so our code will then be something like g03 because we have an anti-clockwise curve g03 we will have a x 10 which is in a positive direction but we will have a y minus 10 because we are moving here down in the negative direction and we will have a radius of 10. so let's see if we are doing this correct boom it was very correct then the next is from here to there we are moving on the y-axis and not on the x-axis and we go still in the negative directions because our center of origin is exactly here and we go down here so it's quite easy it's a g yes tell me guys it's a g01 y minus uh, 8.66 millimeters that's where we go have to enter to come here let's plot it out and as you see here we are but now it starts to get funny because uh, right now we can see that we are missing some information i know the whole item is uh, 50 by 50 millimeters but here i have a circle cut which is anti-clockwise and I, for this exercise here, I absolutely need the distance from here to there. And uh, there's only one way to figure that out. It's by taking a calculator. Let me bring it in here. 
Take a calculator. I know that the distance from here to there is 50 millimeters, so that's what I enter. I know from here to there it is 10 millimeters because I have this information. So I say minus 10. Then I'm here, I can say minus 8.66, minus 8.66. This I don't know, so I subtract this. It is, uh, you will say, yeah, but it's 19 millimeters. No, it's not, because it's only a part of a circle. So I will say minus, um, minus 8.66. Point one two, and this gives me a value of twenty three point twenty two, and this is exactly the distance from here to there. So again, we know the curve is anti-clockwise, so it is a G zero three. I know I go in. A negative direction on the y-axis so it will be y minus and then the distance from there to here which is 23.22 millimeters in a negative direction and I know my radius which is mentioned here and that is R19 this should now make us a beautiful curve, and it does, you can see here, but if you enter your plot, and we are now exactly 8.12 millimeters above this position. And that's quite easy, because we don't change any feet rate, any nothing. And now we will have a G01, which is moving us down from here to there we are still in a negative direction we are still only in the y direction but it will be y minus 8.12 this was wrong because it's dot one two and it brings us down exactly here now it's easy, we need to go from there to there to close the whole circle. So uh, let's do that. Uh, we know we are going X minus direction because we are standing here, center of our region is here. And we go in this direction, which is negative. So we know we go G, 0, 1, X, minus 50. Do we do anything on the y-axis? No, we only follow the x-axis. So uh, let's do that. Boom, and let's plot it out. And here you see we have the first, you have the full contour of our item. Not fully, but because we need to start cut out this uh, circle inside. And for that, we need to use, how should I say, another way to, uh, to calculate this. And I want to bring in another picture here because we will have some new letter commands. If you can see on this one here, this is uh, representing this part of the drawing. And this information we need now is the distance from here on the y-axis into exactly this point on the uh, circle on the x-axis. So I is the letter code for the x-axis here. Then we need to know exactly the distance on the x-axis up here to this point of the circle on the y-axis. And we also need to know, that is not true, what I'm saying here, because I make my drawing is wrong. It should have been at the center. J is, has to move into the center of the, of the circle. 
but not on a, on the I. Then K, you can also have a K letter, but it's only on a set axis, it's barely never used. So sorry for the wrong drawing here, it needs to go in here. Uh, on the J axis, we will remember that. So to find these corners, uh, I know exactly the distance from here and to my Y axis, it is 15 millimeters. And I know it's a diameter of 15, so the radius would be, from here to there, would be 7.5. So I know exactly that the distance from here to there is 7.5 millimeters. So, this means we need to make a, a move up our, first of all we need to move up, yeah? And that's the G. Zero, zero, and we are in minus three about the surface. So we will go positive direction. Set our safety high was 20. Okay. Then we will go G zero, zero. X, X was 7.5 millimeters. Positive and y would be 15 millimeters positive um, and that's on the on the rapid speed okay so let's see where we are now we are exactly where we need to be here 7.5 in here and 15 millimeters here so this is the rapid speed to go up there, we are set uh, safe position. We now need to prepare for uh, for for the, the the drilling, and we say in this case I said G zero zero set uh, minus minus 19 because I'm 20 millimeter up I need to go 19 millimeters down which is in a negative direction on the set axis and uh, that's where we go I did not stop the spindle here because it doesn't make sense to stop the spindle we just continue let it run while we are moving in these uh, high speed positions then I want to say G01 Set minus four because I want to go four millimeters down, uh, three millimeters down into the material, and I stopped one millimeter above uh, before I started uh, cut, uh, control. And for that, I want to use the feed rate F250, and it's now drilling down to uh, this position. It's better to see. You see it here now, we are three millimeters below the surface of the item. And now we need to create this circle here. And uh, we tell the machine to go exactly, because it is here and it knows the position in there and it knows here exactly. So we need to tell the machine we're going in a positive direction, clockwise direction, and I will tell the machine to use I 7.5, which is I was here, and then a radius from here, which looks like that in clockwise position. And that is how you make the, make the circle in g-code program so we wise man will know that we are still not in the right position here and uh, that's absolutely correct the only thing we need to do is to copy this section right and we need to change the only one parameter so i copy this now I go here and 
I can write here, take two, it is uh, the second uh, spot. I put this in here. And the parameter I need to change now is um, this one, which I can call minus six, seven, minus seven. And where's the set here? Seven. Uh, let me see, S7, all the falls change to seven. Do I have more of them? No, I don't. So let's plot it out. Ah, here you see, we have, we have, we have. We have, because we have a center of a region has moved. So we need to move back to, because the take two, so we need to move back to, we are here, it will be x minus 7.5 and we need to move back y minus 15. I think I'm correct on that one. Yeah, now we are there two times. So this is the only change as it's quickly copy paste this stuff here. But uh, now you see we are in these operations. We are now down on minus six millimeters taken in two cards. And yeah, that's how you do this kind of programming. I really hope it helped you. And uh, yeah, let's you just enter this and start to experiment with your, with the NC viewer and hope you get some nice results. Okay, doc, have a nice uh, programming and uh, see you soon again.